Well, I'd like to introduce and welcome our spiritual dad in the house, amazing pastor, friend, and um, John has cheered Duncan and I on when we didn't even believe in ourselves, and we owe a debt of love to John. Let's stand and welcome John. Thank you, John. I love you. Oh, thank you so much, Kate. I'm, I'm just enjoying all of our team here. Uh, just so anointed, so capable. And uh, I don't know, can we have all of our team here in Toronto stand and then the global team that, for, for, with, that are with uh, Catch the Fire, just, just stand up and give the people a wave, guys, right here for a moment, would you? It's, uh, Carol and I have known these people when, when they were young and immature in their gifting. And now, like 10, 15, 20 years on and more, they're just these giants in the anointing, and it's just so fantastic. It's really, really good. Oh, we love it. Okay, well, before we get going, I wanted to... Uh, just do a couple of things. By the way, the, uh, the couple I prayed with while I was sitting out at our, our booth out front, uh, there was a lady here, her husband was, was uh, almost blind. We prayed for him, and then we prayed for her, and she got quite the healing. Are you guys here? Wave at me. Just wave frantically so I could uh, see you if you're, if you're here this morning. Looking, looking. Has anybody got a hand raised that I can't see? Anyway, it was, it was quite amazing. She got a, a wonderful healing right there as we prayed. And uh, I just want to encourage all of you that it is the Father's will to heal you. Absolutely. And how do I know that? Because Jesus healed everybody. And he never did one thing that was out of the Father's will. And so uh, if you've been sitting here all this time and you're in pain and you haven't received a healing yet, I would love to have a go at that right now. <laughs> because it's not his will that you should have it. So if you need a miracle physically, I don't know, any kind of miracle, emotionally, financially, whatever, if you need a miracle Stand up right now. We're going to come into agreement. Carol, run up here and agree with me. Now, how many, how many are in some fairly serious pain right now? And you need a miracle. Okay. I want you to remind yourself it is the will of God. Because here's what happens. We get prayer over and over and over. And it doesn't breakthrough, and you're beginning to wonder, well, maybe, maybe God doesn't want to do it, you know. He absolutely wants to do it. There's other things in the way hindering. Sometimes it's a need to forgive some people. Sometimes it's, I don't know, a lack of faith. I mean, we could make a long list of what hinders grace, but it's enough for you to know and stay childlike. It is the will of God to heal you. So settle that one. Just say to yourself, it's God's will to heal me. And I'm going to believe for my miracle right now. The second thing is, his time is now. How do I know that? He's the great I am. Not so much the great I will be. Though he will be. He's, he's now. He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. So I want you to just be like little children for a moment. And I often think of the words of Jesus when he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is within reach. And do you know what that means? That means you can have it. How many want it? It's within your reach. And, and so that's saying, okay, well, reach for it then. Just that's your little step of faith. You reach for it. You don't deserve it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. None of that. But 
You can reach for it in faith. Amen. And so just over your head is this invisible kingdom of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, where heaven wants to come, not just to earth, but to you. And see, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. There's no cancer, tumors, blood conditions, kidney problems. There's no diabetes. There's no ear problems, eye problems. So I want us to just reach up Amen. like a little five-year-old would do and say, heaven is within my reach, so I'm going to take a hold of it. And just grab that anointing, that thick, oily presence of the Holy Spirit, just by faith. We take a hold of your glory, Lord, your supernatural presence, Lord. We thank you for the intimate worship we've had. We gave our hearts to you in worship. And now we reach up for that glory and that presence. Now then, just let your hands be an extension of the hands of Jesus. And bring them down and rub that thick, oily, anointing, into your pain and into your need. And say that little prayer that Stephen Long and I use so much. This healing belongs to me. Say it out loud. This healing belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done at the whipping and at the cross. I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Let that soak into you. Father, I take authority over pain in your people. That shoulder pain goes right now. That knee pain goes right now. That. Uh, uh, fascia that goes out of those feet right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, that blood condition gets strong. We call your immune system, uh, immune system into strength right here in Jesus' mighty name. <sighs> Touch those eyes in Jesus' name. Burn healing life into those lungs in Jesus' name. That back problem dissolves in the name of Jesus. I call those discs back into divine order right here. You will shrink and stop pinching nerves in Jesus' name. Lord, restore and heal nerve damage in your people right now. That sciatica goes in the name of the Lord. Pain, leave. Every demonic link, I cut you off. I separate you. I put the cross of Jesus Christ between your assignment and these dear people. And those watching online, same with you. Receive your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody has um, foot pain uh, right at your big toe joint. I think it's your right foot. Just when you bend your foot, your, that joint is really excruciatingly sore. Right now, it goes in Jesus' name. Ah, wow, John, I already called that blood condition, but I had that as well. That, ah, if you have a blood condition, just reach up and put, ah, the anointing of God. Somebody around Kathy there, put your hands on her. In Jesus' name, that blood condition comes back into normal right now and that other person back there wow thank you lord mm, thank you father also a heart condition god is healing a heart problem right now in jesus name i, I think it's not beating um the right um rhythm is wrong ah so lord wherever that is lord i just speak healing right now into that in jesus name 
Okay, now I want you to check yourself and do something you couldn't do and just check it out for me real quick. Will you do that? Move, twist, turn, and if you feel like, my goodness, my pain is much less or I have mobility that I didn't have, something's going on, uh, I want you to wave excitedly at me. Just wave. Come on. One here, one here, one over there, one over there. Can I have three or four of you just run up here real quick? Because it's excellent to hear what God does in a thing like this. And always it generates faith because people are like, wow, look at that. They got one, you know, come on up. What happened, Terry? Well, I don't know. I have had my right hand have been really stiff the last half a year and it just disappeared. No stiffness. Fire on him, Lord. Come on up, my dear. <laughs> yeah, th th these stairs over here are easier to, to negotiate. What happened? So last night, God told me that he was going to have a healing, and he was going to heal my arm. I've had pain in my shoulder, and I've had pain in my hand. I broke my wrist um, about two or three years. Wow. Uh, I still have some pain. He told me not to rush it and to let it complete, and he was going to heal it. <laughs> Fire on, Come on it. Check it again. Oh. It's getting much, much better. I can still feel a little bit. Much better? 50%? 80%. Do you know, 80 is really, really good. You know that, isn't it? <laughs> 90, Father. A hundred, yeah. Father. Thank you, Lord. Shaba. What have you got there, Carol? Oh, this is amazing. This, mm. this lady fell off a uh, snowmobile and totally damaged the nerves in her top of her legs. I'll let you tell her. Let yes, her we got hit head on by another sled, and I got thrown off face down, and it caused nerve damage to the fronts of my legs, and I can't handle slacks or anything rubbing against it because it's so painful, and I've been in a lot of pain all weekend long, and it's totally gone. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Never comes back. Wow, thank you, Lord. Uh, what happened to you? Well, um, earlier I was talking to somebody about the, the plantar fasciitis, which God has healed, but, and that was a miracle, just listening to that, but um, I have, like, stubbed my toe, like, a bazillion times one year, I don't know, five years ago, and I've not been able to really bend it, and I had not even prayed for that. And then she, one of you mentioned a toe, and I'm thinking, Wait a minute, Lord, what? And then, and then it's like popped, and now I can like bend it. And I've not been able to bend it up and down without forcing it. So For how long? For now, well, it's been down for about five years. And so it just, and I don't have any pain, or, and I popped it, and it's moving, and so, praise God. <laughs> how many think it, uh, healing a toe is a very, very important miracle? It is. <laughs> it is. Especially if it's your toe. Yeah. Right? Fire on you. Lord, this lady Amen. got healed of about four different things. Sheba. Tell them what happened. She's moving quite a bit. Uh, last year, God healed me my left leg was short, which I didn't know. I'm ICU nurse for 35 years. And then one of a prayer person prayed for me, your leg is short. I said, okay. She prayed for me. I said, I believe that. And she said, you're still short. I want to pray again. I said, sure, I believe it. She did. And then I noticed that I'm nurse, but I have a car accident nine, seven years ago. My pelvis was a tilt, which I didn't know. And then in the morning, I wore the socks. Socks were same equal. That is the first miracle. Second miracle, I threw the broadcasting. Korean, one of the minister. Pray for them. I put them in my neck hand. He cured the second time. Third time, I want to go to IHOP. I said, God, show me. Third time, my husband say, this is not a miracle. It is magic. So I said to God, could you show to me? I can see the riddle without glasses. Guess what? I prayed them. I didn't. They prayed for me. 
And I went to the Kansas City. I went to the hotel. I cannot see. I said, God, what happened to me? And then I say, oh, I'm a stupid nurse. Because I asked him for a fixed right arm. They fixed my leg because of a, I cannot see near sight. And then I say, I'm a stupid nurse. I went the next day again. I tell them, could you pray right one for me? Because I cannot see near sight. They are laughing at me. I have people, they pray for that again. That is a December last, night, last year, December 29th. Since then, I never wear the glass anymore. Today, Carol, she say, who has right toe pain, I was broken my toe because I was working in the hospital. They run to the bed to my toe. And she say, who has right knee? I have left knee problem, they already cured them. I was kneeled down, still pamper. You pray for me, that one. And then she say, who has irregular heartbeat? I have a heart rate of 160 up. I went to emergency room March 23rd. And then you cure me again today. So God cure me, hold my body, brand new. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> Oh, Lord, you're so good, you're so good, you're so good. We'll take a couple more. How are you feeling? Much better. <laughs> okay. um, I had a lot of pain in my left shoulder, and when I pulled the anointing down, that went away. But I was pulled out, like, by the tailbone, so it's been radiating down into my knee, but we're probably about 99% now. <laughs> oh. Wow. 99? Are you happy with that? No. Hey. <laughs> Give her the 100, Lord. Shaba. <laughs> Go ahead, Carol. Okay, this gentleman has come up for prayer, not, not because he's gotten healed. What's happening? So we'll pray for him. Lord, um, she's going to lady. Lady. Okay. Um, what language are we doing here? Spanish. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I will try. Um, she's no, no, my daughter. Oh, but ella es mi hija. Um, ella usó todos sus ahorros de su trabajo. Um, she said I'm her daughter, um, that I used all of my savings from work to. Para traerme aquí, porque ella conoce de este ministerio, yo no sabía de este ministerio. That I used my savings to bring her here um, because I was I knew about this ministry and she didn't know what, what this was about. Um, yo tengo diabetes y por eso ella me quiso traer porque yo estoy perdiendo mi visión, mi vista. Y ella me dijo, yo te quiero llevar allí, mami. Ella pidió tiempo en su trabajo para traerme, pasar unos días para para she was losing her sight due to diabetes, so I, um, I brought her here so she could receive healing for that. Y se supone que eso era lo por lo que iban a orar, pero hace dos días tengo un dolor en la rodilla que yo no podía caminar. Um, so she came here, we brought her here for healing for her sight, but um, two days ago when we got here, she started getting pain for her right leg that she couldn't walk. She's been limping all week, um, and I told her she needed to get paid she, she didn't have that pain before. She just got it when, when we came here. Así que una hermana oró por mí anoche por mi vista y mi diabetes y mis condiciones de salud. Pero esta mañana, cuando usted dijo que... Esta mañana, cuando veníamos del hotel, el hotel ella me dijo... Okay, so, um, uh, some sisters prayed for her, signed for her diabetes yesterday, but when she was standing over there and you were asking for, or, or you were praying for people with um, pain, um, we were believing that you were, that God was going to heal her right leg. Porque uh -huh. tú, esta, esta mañana ella me dijo en el hotel, mami, tú tienes que pedir oración por sanidad. Porque yo no lo había hecho. So all this time, I kept telling her, I'm like, Mother, you have to go get prayed for healing no because all this caminar. time she hadn't done it. So let me get it straight. Your knee is better and your eye, your knee's good. Strong. De repente, de momento, al instante, Más poder, señor. <laughs> Más fuego, right? <laughs> Kathy, come on, run up here and pray for her in Spanish for me. Just take her over the, right over there. Oh, my goodness. I think we should do this one more time real quick. Stand up. Thank you, Lord. 
Wow. All the way, Lord. All the way. Now you gotta be All trusting little children, okay? The kingdom is just there. Reach up for it and take a hold of it by faith. Every single one of us in this room needs miracles, physical miracles, emotional miracles, financial miracles, relational miracles. Lord, we have family members that are unsaved. We, 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 ha we have just a, a multiplicity of things that we're believing God for. We take a hold of the kingdom of heaven, that wonderful power of the Holy Spirit, we bring it down in Jesus' name. Now rub that anointing into whatever you need from him and say, I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Flow in, O oh Holy Spirit. Flow in, flow in, flow in, flow in, flow in. I worship you. I worship you. Now check yourself. Very important that you check yourself after prayer because sometimes you're only like 10, 20% better and you, and you need to like, oh wow, actually things are, things are shifting a little bit here. How many feel better this second time? Something happened to you. Give me a wave, excitedly. See, we got more the second time than the first time. What does that tell you? The Holy Spirit would do this all day long if we would just stay with it and, and keep going for it with him. John. Woof. Carol. Guess what Jesus just did? This man had fallen 15 feet off a ladder onto his back, and his disc was one half inch out from his spinal column, and they said they could give him an operation with 70 to 75 percent chance of being in a wheelchair or just go with the pain. So, and what, what has Jesus just done for you now? It's healed. <laughs> So, so, have you no pain at all? No, no pain, no. Can you check it out? Like no. twist, was, turn? He was no. bending down. He bend down. Like... Bend down for us. He said, no I pain couldn't at all. do it. He couldn't do that. I can go backwards. Everything feels good. Yeah, it's just amazing. Fire on him, Lord. Let it come. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, you know, a lot of times, if we'll just spend time praying for somebody, like he came up for prayer. He was not healed when he came up on the platform. If you just spend a bit of time. So what did I spend with him? Five minutes, ten minutes? Just got him to forgive the, the people whose ladder broke when he climbed up it. And, and then we just, you know, p prayed healing, took you the shock and trauma. somebody's bladder just got healed right here. So, you know, we can just persist and keep I mean, on take going. take a bladder healing, wave at me. Yeah. Praise God, I don't need that. damage, right? yeah. <laughs> Normally you don't That's one wave thing about I don't that, need. But Hallelujah. Come on. A lot All of right, let's, uh, let's transition here then. Um, Yeah, the, the couple that I called out at first, they're sitting on the front row. Ma'am, how are you this morning? Much better. Let me have some of the prayer team come and just okay. soak them and pray for his eyesight. His eyesight is, I don't know, 10% in one eye type of thing. And we just want to believe for a miracle for, for him as well. But she got a wonderful healing and, and that was just fantastic. Okay, before I get into the message, I have a great message for you today about a well within you, but uh, I, want to, uh, I want to announce uh, about our, our mission that we have, in, in, and it's called Harvest Gardens. And I don't know of anything that's as effective as this in terms of what you get for the investment because 
the investment for one garden is 500 pounds, $750, and that will feed 50 people for life. And so uh, then it spreads out from there to be people try this at home. We're going to do a smaller version at home. Next thing you know, you're feeding 500 people. It just takes off that way and works so well. How many know that you don't exist very well just by eating cornmeal? You got to have fresh vegetables. You got to have, you know, and, and we had stories of orphanages that have been transformed, an orphanage transformed because the children started getting a green smoothie every morning and their medical bill budget just went away. It's amazing. So, guys, can you go ahead and, and show that clip for me and then we'll go from there. One of the greatest challenges facing developing countries is to provide enough nutritious food to feed its people. The resources are there, but utilizing them is an issue when education and funding are limited. This is where harvest gardens can make a huge impact in communities, changing them for life as it teaches the local people how to cultivate and grow healthy, life-giving, nutritious vegetables. It's easy, cost-effective, and sustainable. My job in Harvest Gardens is I'm a trainer and I train, uh, I go into the villages, we meet groups of people and we talk to them about the, what they need before uh, we do a garden for them. We train them, we have a good time with them, we share the word of God with them, we make friends with them. Frank is one of our trainers The most in Kenya. unique things that we are doing in Harvest Gardens is the double digging. We dig two feet deep so that we are creating a spongy structure down there. We are keeping good, a good amount of water in there. And then we also don't use any chemicals whatsoever. So we make compost and that's what enriches the soil. And uh, because we need to preserve water more and more, so we do mulching. So one other thing we are doing is we are encouraging a lot of crop rotation. You have to look at which crops go together with uh, which, one, which other crops so that they are benefiting from each other. It's not like there's a harvesting season. We, have, we can do harvesting every other time all around the year. Ground is chosen where there is the most need. Quite often, this can be next to a school or children's home so that not only does it benefit the children physically, but they learn how to do it. I'm a principal of a high school. We had um, Pastor Mona who came to talk to our students about the need to develop uh, our vegetables and fruits using uh, organic manure. The, the project has benefited us a lot. Uh, we are able to produce food free from use of chemicals and pesticides. We have also learned to eat healthy in that uh, what we had ignored as vegetables in our diet, we have now put it in place. Stella is part of a Harvest Gardens project that has had an amazing impact in the community, not only helping and enabling participants of the project, but also impacting their neighbors. I have a neighbor and she has two sons and they have been sickly, suffering from malaria often. So there was a time she came around, she wanted assistance from me. So I just introduced her to the hub, I prepared it and gave her to go and give her children. She did so and she came with amazing results that the children were better without taking them to the hospital. This project is not only making a difference to children, but it is also empowering widows who having learned how to cultivate in an effective way, create their own vegetable beds, and after feeding their families, can sell the surplus. 
Harvest Gardens is a remarkable, cost-effective project that makes a huge difference in the lives of so many people. It not only provides food, but educates people on how to use the resources God has given to the maximum. Using simple techniques like double digging and mulching to conserve limited water reserves. Fertilizing with organic material rather than buying expensive chemicals and by mixing crops to reduce pest infestation to virtually nil. It is also sustainable as seeds are collected for the next crop. Harvest Gardens would like to give you the opportunity to partner in providing the initial funding to start a garden to transform a community for good. For just $750, you can change lives giving a future to those who may not have one. Very, very good. I think we, I think we have over 100 of these now. There's one church in the UK sponsored 15 of them because they just love what, what happens so well. So when people say, we want to help get one going, uh, my granddaughter Jessica will, gets them on Facebook and they name it and you get pictures back and everything. But Terry, you're here. Come and tell us quick about what's happening with that garden that you sent me pictures of in Niger. Yeah, um, two, uh, is it three years ago? we were able to send uh, three of our coworkers for training in Kenya, our coworkers from West Africa, from Niger. Yeah. And, uh, and they went through it, they were really excited, came back, and they were in two villages or two towns. And in one town, they had first one little garden. And after the people around saw the success, the king called him, the king in the area, and they opened up 20 new gardens the next year. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they had, well, they gathered the, all of the workers in the gardens regularly. And they were all Muslims, but we preached the gospel to them all every day. Yeah. Well, at least many times a week. That was beautiful. <laughs> and, um, and, um, Another place that we started a, a garden, the, the guy who started it, he's one of our pastors, had been preaching in that place for years. Yeah. And everyone said, hey, we don't want anything from you because it's an Islamic area where there are just a handful of Christians. Yeah. But he did his, uh, his garden. And actually, before we, we sent him to Kenya, we were a bit reluctant if we should send him because we didn't know if he would be able to do farming because he was really sick with ulcers, diabetes, and some other things. And he looked like 10, 15 years older than what he really was. But when I saw him now some weeks ago, he had now a garden, amazing garden, in a very dry area, full of, it looks like a garden of Eden, and he looks suddenly 10, 15 years younger than his age. Wow. Hallelujah. And now the whole village want to come to him and hear, and also to hear what he had to say from God. So it's blessing them uh, materially and also spiritually. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, very, very good. All right, well. Come and see us at the table just outside the door in the front foyer and you can be praying about whether your church or your family would like to support one and uh, it was a good idea like we, we had a church in England one, one of their people died and they wanted a garden instead of sending money to the cancer society or whatever in the garden uh, idea that the idea of a living producing helping growing food for people just uh, just sort of appealed to them and so they went ahead and, and by the time they were done they, they took up enough offering for to, to do three gardens so that, that was that. Well, give Jesus a hand for what he's doing all over the world. 
Let's open our Bibles together this morning, and uh, I want us to, to think about a couple of scriptures that have to do, first of all, with the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit. And just as a, a preamble, really, we, we in these conferences, we're, we're doing this dance with the Trinity, okay? Sometimes it's emphasizing the Father and the Father's love. And when we talk about the Father, we need to get to know him. And once you get to know him and have had a, an experience, an encounter of revealing his love, it changes everything. But it's all because of Jesus, of course. How many are thankful for Jesus? And now he has transformed your life and come into your heart. And so there's the Father and the Son. But then there's also the Holy Spirit, who's the one who's been left with us and sent to us here on earth. So let's just welcome the Holy Spirit into this room. Can we do that? Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We want more of you. We want more of your presence, more of your fire, more of your love, more of your healing. We just want you. We want more of you. Amen. Now just lay hands on somebody near you and say, fire on you right here. Just. See, the Holy Spirit is to be encountered. He's to be experienced. He wants to flow out of you. Well, if we go to the Gospel of Matthew and verse 11, we see John the Baptist speaking, and he says this, I truly baptize you in water, but the one coming after me is mightier than I am. I'm not worthy to even untie his shoes. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Now, first of all, the, the word baptism I want us to consider. Uh, baptism is really baptizo in the Greek. It's untranslated in the English Bible. But it means to immerse. Okay? It's not a dip. It's not a splash. It's immerse. And so all you wonderful traditional Christians who uh, may disagree with me on that, well... Take my word for it, that's what the Greek means. And so Jesus is not uh, promising, I'm going to splash you with the Holy Spirit, or I'm going to quickly dip you in and out of the Holy Spirit. He, he's saying, I am going to immerse you in the Holy Spirit. That means he's going to put you under and keep you under for a while until you start to absorb and, and you, you take it on. And over the years, we've used the sort of the pickling analogy, you know, where, where uh, they found this old ancient Greek recipe about how to make pickles, and it used the word baptizo. And so when you blanch them, you dip them in, bapto, in and out, hot water to sterilize them. But then, after you're done, you immerse them for about 15 days or whatever the recipe calls for. You baptizo those little cucumbers and you leave them in the solution until they don't taste like cucumbers anymore. They taste like the solution that they were immersed in. How many want to taste more like the Holy Spirit? You know the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Who, who can name it all nine? Love, joy, peace. And somebody said it, self-control. I'm glad you mentioned that, the fruit of self-control, because we've been accused of things being out of control here. <laughs> and so we need to just, just, just to comment, uh, the gift of self-control is for you to control yourself. That's not for you to control the Holy Spirit. See, because he's going to do what he wants to do. And so if he wants to blind Saul of Tarsus, he can do that against his will. Yes? 
if he wants Zechariah to not say anything for nine months, then he can do that by the power of God. How many know God is powerful? And so, but basically it's his personality that he wants to immerse us in. How many want to be immersed in him all over again? So what we're going to do this morning is have a time at the back for those who want prayer and soaking and impartation to just go back and stand on the lines facing, facing the exit. And we're, we're going to come along with the team and pray for you. But let me get the message first. Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 1 to 14. And this, this is such an amazing scripture, really. And part of this came alive for me in a whole new way recently, and so I want to share it with you. Uh, in verse 3, it says, He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sechar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Now, this, this sort of is interesting to me because Jesus sent them all or allowed them all to go and he's like, no, I'm just going to stay here. I'm, I'm alone. I'm, I'm fine. You guys go ahead. And so he stays alone, and along comes this woman. He asks her for a drink. And the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her a very, very interesting response. If you knew the gift of God, if you knew two things, number one, if you knew the gift of God, and number two, who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now she's trying to figure out just what's going on here. She's, she's not sure, who, who is this Jewish guy? Is he, is he hitting on me? Is he... Just being weird, like, what, what's, what's going on? So she says, sir, you, you got no bucket. You have nothing to draw with, and the well's deep. Where are you going to get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Say that to your friend, never thirst. <laughs> but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, I'm not sure that look on this woman's face. I'm not sure if this is a, a, a sincere kind of response or if she's if she's just still trying to brush off this guy that she's not too sure about. But she says, okay, give me some of this water then that I may not thirst nor have to come here and draw water. Okay, so let me have some then. And he says, go call your husband. I don't have a husband. Well said. You have a husband. For you've had five husbands, and the one you, you now have is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. All of a sudden, everything goes, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> the secrets of her heart have been revealed. She knows this guy is not being smart with me. He is a man of God. I perceive you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you say Jerusalem's the place we need to worship. And he says, woman, believe me, the hour is coming 
when you will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. Salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Wow. We could really take that on board this morning, couldn't we? It just may be that all the um, contemplative uh, people get a front row in heaven because they're just so longing to worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah's coming. He's called Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all things. And And listen to this, Jesus never told anybody this. But to this Samaritan woman, he says, I who speak to you am he. Do you know he didn't even tell the disciples that? He says, okay, who who do you say I am? Who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're Moses and some say you're one of the prophets come back to life again. Some say you're Elijah or this prophet or whatever. Well, who do you say I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, wow, good for you, Peter. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. My father in heaven revealed that to you. See, he didn't tell anybody this, but he tells this woman. Isn't that great? Amazing to me. Then the disciples turn up and they're surprised he's speaking to a woman, but they don't ask like, what do you want? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left and ran into the city. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They went out to the city and and met Jesus and came to believe in him on their own because they heard uh, the words for for themselves. They heard his words for themselves. Back to verse 14. Whoever drinks of this water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Now friends, I've read this passage for many, many years. But I was always sort of you know, uh, uh, one part of it about never thirst again, because I was, I was always saying, but Lord, I, 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 I'm not looking for drinks elsewhere, but I'm still thirsty. I still want more. We've been going around saying more, more, more all the time. Yeah? How many want more? Yeah. So in that sense, I'm still thirsty for more. And I think I missed his point, actually. Because what he's saying is, if you you know the gift of God, what's the gift of God? The gift of God, I mean, we could list a number of things, Jesus himself and so on. But in, in this context, he's talking about the Father's gift of the Holy Spirit. Like in Acts chapter 1, wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. It's the Father's blessing that he wants to give out. If you knew the gift of God, how many know the gift of God? How many wave excitedly? You know the gift of God. The gift of God is the promise of the Holy Spirit to come and fill you and equip you and heal you and impart to you. And so the Holy Spirit comes into you for your strengthening and gifting and helping and and so and then he comes on you to empower you to overcome your shyness and your fears and giving you boldness to carry this out into a broken hurting world that's the gift of God if you knew the gift of God the Holy Spirit and number two if you knew who it was that's speaking with you you'd ask him for a drink and you know what he'd give it to you And it's not just a drink, it's living water 
that's actually going to become a fountain within you, springing up into everlasting life. A well of water springing up within you. You know, I think we, I think we were living, uh, or we relocated our church here on Atwell Drive, and it was almost like a couple of years before it dawned on us that we were at the well. <laughs> Can you imagine? At Well Drive. That's where we are. We're at, we're at the well right here. And honestly, this place has been a well of living water just for people to come and draw from. But it's not just corporately, it's individually. He wants to place in you a well of water so that you will never thirst again because if you get thirsty, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to Toronto, you don't have to go to Raleigh or London or, or California or anywhere. Why? Because you got your own source right here, right in your inner being. Now, I think we should all stand and ask Jesus for living water. And not just a drink, we want the well right in here. Right? Say, Lord, I know the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that gift, O oh, Holy Spirit. I know the gift of God, I want that. And I also know who's speaking this promise. Lord Jesus, may I have a drink of you. And I hear him saying, yes, you may. <laughs> now begin to drink right now. Just begin to drink. Drink, drink, drink. But, but that drink becomes a well within you. And so, Lord... Let that living water go down in the midst of them and multiply so that they will never be without the drink ever again. Now just start drinking. You know, we drink all kinds of stuff. Don't we drink living water. We, we drink new wine. We... <laughs> We drink in the, the anointed air presence of the Holy Spirit. But it's just living water. Now, I believe in impartation, friends. I totally believe in impartation. But you know what? Impartation will last you three days or three months or three years. But eventually it runs out, seemingly unless you learn how to replenish yourself in the anointing. And so it's not up to leaders in the body of Christ to keep you topped up, so to speak. You need to learn to drink from your own well. Now within you, by faith, there is a well, a spring of living water that you can begin to drink from. So I want you to take out sort of an anointed heavenly straw and just attach it down here, out of your belly, you know, and, and, and just have a good drink. Are you ready? Are you thirsty? Have another one. Ah, living water, Lord, it's bubbling up. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Come on, bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Yeah, that's what the belly bun's for. Put the straw in there. <laughs> Ready? One more drink. We're drinking high test living water. Wow, of the Holy Spirit. My goodness. Lord, we will never thirst again. I'm so grateful to you for that. Mm. Now then when when you when you drink too much, 
then you can give it away. And so, you know, just lay hands on somebody near you and say, take the overflow right here. Take that overwhelming overflow of the Holy Ghost and fire. Shika Rabasata. Okay, you can be seated. Now what we're talking about is also found in John chapter 7 and verse 37, very familiar scriptures to all the river people. It says this, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out in a loud voice for all to hear. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. The Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now he's been crucified, dead, resurrected, and glorified. The Holy Spirit has been given so that out of your innermost being, rivers of living water are supposed to flow. And this is like an activation for the season that we're in. Do you know the greatest harvest the world has ever seen is pending. It's just before us. In fact, it's already on. It's happening all over the world in many, many, many places. And this is the driver here. This is the thing that's moving it all forward. Living water pouring out of the lives of believers all over the world. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. We read about the day of Pentecost when it was fully come and they were all with one accord in one place. They're in the upper room and the door is locked and the door is locked because of fear that someone would find them and try to kill them like they did Jesus. But suddenly there came a sound from heaven Gosh, that song that Laura sang, wasn't that just mighty? I mean, oh my goodness, Laura. Rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting, and tongues of fire sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And then they poured out on the street. So we had the Spirit descend in the private place in great power, and then it overflowed into the public place. Now, how many want this where you live? So this is totally a God thing. This is not us coming up with something, uh, and we're going to do a Spirit Cafe or a this or a that. This is... The override of heaven. We're in a place honoring the anointing, honoring the promise of the Father, asking Jesus for a drink. It is an intense prayer meeting, timed as it were, right at the Feast of Pentecost. And suddenly there is an outpouring that is more intense than anything anyone has ever seen, heard of, or imagined. And it overflows into the public place. And we want the Spirit to descend on you now for you and then overflow into the marketplace around you. That's where this is going, friends. So where is it all going? It was just so we can have better cities to live in and... Uh, 
you know, better countries and we get rid of corruption and we get rid of poverty and all that. Yeah, I hope we do some of that. And it'd be great if we minimize that horrible sex trade that's out of control and all of that. It will make a difference. But see, where it's going is dividing the sheep from the goats, so to speak, who wants him and who doesn't. And there's a mighty wave of heaven coming along to help people make up their mind what side they want to be on. This is gearing up for the return of the king. I'm absolutely convinced of it. What side are you on, by the way? How many want absolutely in on this? I want to be one of those worshipers that the Father is seeking for. And it may be that you're here and you're on the fence. You're like, oh, these people, I don't know. I'm, I came to this conference, but I'm not really sold on it all. I tell you what, get in or get out. That's where it's going. People are going to get in or get out. And in order to save your life, you might have to get out. What about that? How many like to think that you would die for this thing? Wave your hand so heaven can see you. Come on, people. What he's calling us to do is to get filled with the Holy Spirit like we have never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Put your hand on, the, on that well within you and bless it. So I like how you can feel him moving in there, you know. It's like, it's just so cool that you can actually feel his presence, isn't it? It's like another person in there. I mean, I often thought it must really, really feel weird to be a lady and to be pregnant and feel this other life, you know, jumping inside of you or something. You're like, that's not just a tumor or whatever, that's a person in there jumping. But now for, for all of us, men and women, there's another person who lives in here. This is the person of the Holy Spirit. He's forever generating more of that living water. You know, we did a mission to Honduras a couple of years ago, and we saw lots of healing, lots of miracles. But one of the miracles we saw was one I'd never seen before, and that was water was multiplied. Now we had, uh, the, the army was bringing water every day up to these remote parts of the city that they'd secure and make safe. And, but this day they forgot the water. And so all they had was a little basin of water, like a wash tub full. And the, the girls who were washing head lice out of all the children are trying to, you know, they're saying, well, this is only gonna last us for an hour and then what, you know? And then the guys that come in take a great big pail out to flush the cho toilets with. And they're like, no, no, don't take our water. But then we realized it only, it went down to about half and that's where it stayed. Isn't that awesome? He can multiply water. I mean, who knew he can multiply water? Well, duh. Any, is anything too hard for the Lord? No. So... Put your hand on your well right here. Because you're going to have a miracle the rest of your life. Living water is going to be multiplied and multiplied. And, and you will never thirst again. Come on, you will never thirst again. You'll never do without again. There's living water deposited within you. And every time you are thirsty, you just hook up your straw and you go... You have a drink of living water. <sighs> so now you don't need people to lay hands on you. You just go get your own drink. But having said that, we do impart to one another. And when one is down, it's good to get a good drink from someone else, you know. And people will pour you a drink, and that's good. And... Uh, I want to ask how many would love an impartation this morning from our ministry team here?
would you? We uh, are going to need some help with catchers. Sandra, are you here somewhere? How many on the team do we have? 30? Have we got uh, 30 sturdy people? that would help us with catching. And so, um, ministry team, wherever you are, if you could stand up, just stay where you are, but stand. They're all over there, mostly. If you're willing to help them at, with catching, just you also stand and, and go and head for one of these people. And team, keep your hand up till you got someone and then you can go to the back. But here's what the rest of us are gonna do. Go and stand at the back on those lines, but do not be a spectator. I want you to go back there and start connecting and be one of those worshipers that worships the Father in spirit and in truth. Start worshiping, start drinking from your own well, start believing for a mighty filling of the Holy Spirit. And see, here's why, because Friends, we've been doing this for 23 years almost. And I tell you what changes people. It's not the preaching. It sometimes is the worship. But it always is the prayer time when the Holy Spirit comes mightily upon a person's life and they get soaked in that well and in that river and they'll never, ever be the same again. So if you want an impartation, head for those lines at the back. And if there's no room in half the mezzanine, uh, go upstairs because there is room up there. Okay, let's pray. Loving Father, I thank you for the Father's promise that he will give us the Holy Spirit. And oh, Holy Spirit, I'm thankful that we don't just get one impartation of this, but, but over and over and over and over, we keep on being refilled with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we want you, we want you to teach us how to drink from our own well, so that out of our innermost being, rivers of living water will flow. And so as we, as your people, as we wait upon the Lord, I ask you to come and fill us full of heaven's best in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.